One of the ways we can sort of see the dead zone in the bay is by looking for the animals that live at the bottom of the bay because that's where the oxygen is the lowest during the summer. Um, so what we're going to show you is we're actually going to go out to certain areas of the bay that had good oxygen this summer and had bad oxygen this summer and see what we can find. Today we are out um, about 30 feet of water deep here. It's an area of the bay that we know um, had no oxygen or very low oxygen during the summer, which is the, the dead zone of the bay. So we're out basically in an area that's the dead zone. I'm going to use a sampling device to, to grab a piece of the mud from the bottom of the bay to bring it up um, to show you what the bottom of a dead bay looks like and to see if we can find any life whatsoever living there. Okay, get our sample. And then the laborious task of pulling it back up. Placing it over. Open it up. Oh, yeah. So that's nice and black mud, which means it was didn't have oxygen over, which is sort of what we were expecting. If you would smell it, it smells like rotten eggs, which is hydrogen sulfide that's produced again under low or no oxygen conditions. So I'm going to sieve this mud and we're going to try to find if we have anything living in the mud. And what would be living in the mud are little things like clams and worms and little crustaceans and they are fish food and crab food uh, that, that the animals in the bay, so they're basically the bottom of the food chain. So um, if we don't find any animals that means our the rest of the food chain doesn't have anything to eat. So we're going to sieve the sediment and see what we find. Sort of like panning for gold, only I'm, I'm panning for critters. All right, let's see. Well, it's not totally dead. We've got a little worm part right there. Fragment of a worm. we got some shells of clams and maybe a little live clam. Actually, that was a shell. So basically, this is the dead zone. This is why we call it the dead zone, because uh, there's nothing living here. No, well, very little anyway. So that's not what we like to see. Again, these the animals that we would normally like to find are fish food. And so if we don't have any food for the fish and crabs that we like to eat, um, we're not going to be able to have the fish and crabs. So. That's not a good sign, but again, it was what we expected. That's why we came out here. It's, it's deep water and it's part of the, the dead zone of the bay. We're in Oyster Creek, which is a little tributary to the Chesapeake Bay. And there's no particular reason why we, we picked this tributary other than we know that the bottom here is muddy, like we saw out in the main bay. And also we know it, it's shallow water and the, there's a lots of dissolved oxygen here this summer. So. We're going to take another grab sample and, and sieve through it and see what kind of critters we can find here in an area that's not the dead zone that, that had oxygen this summer. Over the side, probably about, what, five feet of water here? People are going to think I'm crazy for thinking that mud is good looking, but I do. This is uh, healthy mud, you would say. See how it's nice and brown color. The other mud we pulled up was nice and black. On top, it's brown, very thick layer of brown, and then it has uh, just gray on the bottom. And what, to me, that says is that there was oxygen here, um, which is a good thing. What I would like to find here are worms and clams that are living this time, unlike they were at the last station, which was dead. And my favorite critter, which is a little crustacean, so like a related to shrimp, called an amphipod, which is known by scientists to be sensitive to water quality. In other words, if there's poor water quality, you don't typically find them. So if you do find them, that's a good sign. There's some, you can see the worm right here. A couple of worms. That's, here's my little well, amphipods. Like if I can, oops, I just, where did he go? There he is. He's a little muddy. But you can see it's, yeah. looks like a little, tiny little shrimp. And again, those are an indication that the water quality here is pretty good. They also are, like oysters, they, they filter feed. So oysters are well known to be important ecologically because they 
filter the water, they filter that algae out of the water. And a lot of these guys do the same thing. Um, in fact, those little amphipods do it. Uh, the, the clams certainly do it. And so their filters, little filters, even though they're, they're small, when you put all their numbers together, um, they, it adds up to quite a bit. So if we lose these filters, just like is happening because we've lost the oysters, um, we're definitely changing the ecology of the bay. Every year, the dead zone extends from about just about the Bay Bridge or sometimes a little north all the way down to Virginia to about the mouth of the York River. This year was no exception. We had a dead zone ex extending that far. So what we're saying is that a huge part of the bay, huge area of the bay is basically off limits to, to fish, to crabs, and to the, the little animals that we were looking for in the sieve sediment, the, the food for those fish and crabs that we like to eat.